In episode 10 of the Skirmish War Games Hobby Vlog, we look at a veritable fleet of Gaslands Ready Jada Battle Machines. Well, hi folks, this is Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com. Welcome to episode 10 of the Skirmish War Games Hobby Vlog, where we cover some smaller topics that may not warrant the full uh, cinematic experience, but we think are kind of interesting anyway. So I'm here with Lynn. And Lynn, can you see what we have here before you? Cars. Does that mean we get to play Gaslands again soon? Yeah, we'll play Gaslands again. We're trying to uh, juggle a lot of different games, but Gaslands is definitely one of our favorites. And uh, this is a topic that I wanted to touch on uh, for quite a while now, but we just never got around to it. And this is a batch of uh, Jada Toys Battle Machine. So the story here is a few years back, somewhere around maybe 2018, 2019, I was surfing the web looking for cool car customizing ideas for Gaslands. The game of post-apocalyptic vehicular mayhem, written by Mike Hutchinson and published by Osprey Games. So somewhere during that trip down the rabbit hole, I stumbled across this lot of uh, 2009 Jada Battle Machines. These are 164 scale diecast cars that look like they're decked out for a Death Race 2000 or a Mad Max or something. Now I was vaguely familiar with Jada's uh, diecast line because we would occasionally see their cars and trucks for sale in the Hot Wheels aisle at the local Walmart when we were perusing for Gasland stuff, but I was not aware of Battle Machines. Now this here is a more recent Jada release. This is from the uh, Just Trucks line, and I think we got this at Walmart for uh, $3.95, so four bucks. Now in regards to these Battle Machines here from about 2009, one could reasonably say, you know what, why do you need to have uh, diecast cars with guns already on them? Because half the fun of Gaslands is building your own cars and trucks, and uh, all I can say is uh, I was intrigued. I'd never seen these cars before. The lot was going for a fairly reasonable price. And so yada yada, I bought the fleet. So what's the story with these guys? Well, from what I understand, Jade of Battle Machines actually began about 10 to 12 years ago as a line of 1 16th scale RC cars that folks could use to play car combat laser tag. So basically you and your buddies get some of these uh, RC battle machine cars and each one is armed with a little uh, infrared projector and then you zip around trying to shoot each other with that little infrared beam and every time you do you knock a point off their shield and the first person to get to three points is the winner. The Battle Machines line also included uh, attack helicopters, ATVs, and battle buggies and uh, the battle buggies shot physical discs in addition to um, their little infrared ray gun and just for grins, I did a quick search today, and you can still buy the uh, Battle Machines RC sets. You can get a set of two RC Battle Machines from Amazon, Target, or Best Buy for about 60 bucks. In fact, our local Target up here up the road um, has them in stock, so we could go pick one up today if we were so inclined. But we're not going to do that. So the RC line, I guess, was the, the main line, and then uh, Jada also sold 132 and 164 scale diecast cars based on the line of RC cars. So that's what these are here. These 164 scale battle machines are based on the RC cars from the battle machines uh, RC line. Now, like I just mentioned, you can still get the uh, RC sets pretty easily, but uh, these uh, die cast versions, the 164 scale guys are a little bit harder to come by. But I looked on eBay today and they seem to be kind of in the uh, 10 to $20 range um, for some of them if you shop around. And that sounds a little bit high if you compare it to uh, 99 cent Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars. But it isn't really that bad if you're in the habit of buying little plastic ships or planes for games like X-Wing, Armada, or Wings of Glory. So those are uh, on the cheap end, about 15 bucks a piece. So yeah, that would put these cars kind of in that range, even though originally they probably were about four bucks like the uh, current uh, Jada cars from some of their different lines. So anyway, just for grins, we thought we'd open up some of these today and uh, take a closer look at them and then compare them to some typical Hot Wheels and Matchbox Gaslands builds. So if you aren't into uh, building cars and you just wanted to play Gaslands, these might be a decent option. And Jada, like I said earlier, also had uh, other lines, like here's a modern line. This is uh, just trucks. We got that at Walmart for like uh, four bucks. What do you got there? Oh yeah, that's... Uh, this was one of their older lines. This is uh, for sale. So these are like garage finds. So there's an old flatbed. 
What do you got there? There's a Chevy Suburban. So these are all weathered and everything like that. So that could be a, a pretty good gas lands car too. You could deck that out with some weapons if you wanted. All right, Lenny, you ready to open some of these up? Let's free the cars. Let's free the cars. Let's uh, reduce their collectible value, but increase their gas lands value. And uh, we're going to take a couple of minutes off screen here, open these up so we don't overwhelm you with crinkling plastic sounds. And before we get too crazy into the unboxing, I will mention that there is a Series 1 and a Series 2. So some of these are Series 1 and some are Series 2, but I think those are the only series that they had. So these are probably not all of the uh, Jada Battle Machines available, but they might represent a pretty good sampling. So let's check them out. Okay, and just to give you a little bit of comparison, here are some of the Gaslands vehicles that we built over the years. We haven't built any for a while, though I have a ton of Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels cars in reserve, so someday we'll get back on that kick. But uh, So this yellow one is Skull Blazer. This is the Compensator. This is Blue Streak, one of the first cars that Lynn built. And then this was my first car, and I don't think you ever got a name, but that is just a regular old uh, Jeep SUV. And so those are uh, some of our Gaslands fleet, but let's take a look at how these other guys size up against them. So this guy here is the 06 Mustang GT. He's uh, armored up, you see some rivets there, and uh, some slats over the windows, but he doesn't have a lot of external weapons, except when you turn to the front, looks like he might be rocking some missiles there. And he's got some kind of a cow catcher as well. So that is the Mustang. And as you can see, it is uh, quite a bit bigger than the standard kind of Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. This is maybe a true 164 scale compared to whatever uh, varying scale that the smaller die-cast cars use. I'm not exactly sure, it kind of varies. Okay, so this is an exception to the rule. This is the uh, Jada uh, Battle Machines Battle Rig. So as you can see, this is kind of an armored big rig. He's got some kind of a turret there on the back, and he is actually smaller in scale so they did that, I'm sure, to make uh, the big rig fit in the packaging. But because he's a little bit smaller in scale, he's actually not that far out of scale with uh, the Hot Wheels cars and the Matchbox cars. So uh, not 100% uh, in line. I think that's hard to do because uh, each of these vehicles, from every manufacturer, they tend to kind of vary a little bit within their scale. But close enough, I think you could put that on a Gaslands track and it wouldn't look too far out of line. And he's got some, uh, looks like some stylized biohazard markers there on the side. He's got his uh, big uh, anti-aircraft gun on the back. And guns see. on the front too. Oh yeah. Machine guns it looks like. Right. And the cow catcher of course. And some kind of machine guns on the front. And then the uh, ubiquitous uh, ram. He's kind of in an odd size category because he's uh, smaller than the regular battle machines and still not quite uh, appropriate sized for um, the Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. But like I said, probably close enough. So if you needed kind of an instant uh, uh, armored and armed uh, Mad Max type big rig, this might do the trick. Here's the 1970 Dodge Challenger. And he has a turret on the top, which moves. And uh, as you can see, he is a little bit smaller than uh, the Mustang here, which means he's actually reasonably in scale with some of the typical die-cast cars you might get from Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Maisto, Johnny Lightning, etc. So let's take a look here. The Mean Green Machine. These cars came out, I think, uh, in the 2009 through 2013 range, I think some of these are copyright 2011. Yeah, so they've been out of production probably for about 10 years. But you can still find them. All right, the Mean Green Machine. What else we got? What's next? Oh, the, the cab. The 57 Chevy Bel Air. This reminds me of the cab from that old movie Heavy Metal where they had the armed and armored taxi. So this is the 57 Bel Air. Looks like he's got uh, slats on the windows to protect from gunfire and then uh, some armored panels and then some kind of a minigun on the front to clear the way, to clear the path in heavy traffic so you can get to the airport on time. Toll paid on impact, I think that says on the back. So you pay extra if there's any crashes. That's right. There is a damage fee 
if he gets his armor dented. The license plate says T. Bickle. A little inside joke for you uh, Scorsese and De Niro fans out there. You talking to me? Okay, that's the Bel Air. Let's take a look at this Silverado here. Just looking at the back of the box, when it says uh, Chevy Silverado there on the bottom, it has two uh, item numbers, 021 and 022. So I think that means there's two Silverados in different color schemes. So we have uh, 022. So this uh, red one is 022. So that means there's a 021 running around with a different color scheme. And let's size them up. Not too bad. You would expect a big pickup to be a little larger than the other cars. So uh, yeah, he's acceptable. It's funny, this Mustang just tends to be huge compared to everybody else, and I'm not sure why. But the pickup fits in not too badly with uh, the Hot Wheels and the Matchbox cars. So it looks like the Silverado here has a fire truck theme, though he doesn't really look like he's equipped to put out any fires. Maybe more likely he's starting fires. So he is the fire brigade. He's the fire bringer. That's right. He brings the flame. So it looks like some kind of an auto cannon on the back, some kind of a Gatling gun on the front. And um, the front graphics say burn warning. Yeah, you would think it'd be more thematic if he had a flamethrower or something, but uh, he's got a cannon on the front and a cannon on the back. Maybe that's sufficient. All right, what else we got? Got two police cars. 06 Ford Mustang GT. Right. And the 69 Chevy Camaro SS. Okay. So here's the Camaro police car. Prepare to get served, it says on the graphics. Serve you a few bullets. Serve you a few bullets. So, uh, yeah, got his front mounted uh, Gatling gun. And then the Mustang. Here's where we see maybe different paint jobs for the same vehicle. So that Mustang looks pretty similar. Maybe not exactly the same though. These are both 06 Ford Mustang GTs. And there's a different hood scoop on the police car. But other than that, they look pretty similar other than the paint job. So again, I don't see a whole lot of external weaponry on the, the police car, except for what appears to be some forward facing rockets. That'll end a pursuit pretty quickly. So that is uh, the Mustang police car, and then the other one was what, the Camaro police car, right? And I think we have another Camaro floating around here, don't we? We got two more Camaros. Oh, two more Camaros. All right, so here's a couple of 69 Camaros. Here's the police car, which is also a 69 Camaro. And you can see that they kind of just use the same body style with a slightly different paint job. So this uh, green one here uh, kind of has a, a military theme. He's the peacemaker. And this black one here just says 69 Camaro SS. All right. So if you're a Camaro fan, you got three different color schemes there. And uh, if you wanted to play a... Uh, police type uh, squad, then you have at least a couple of police cars to choose from. And then maybe the uh, fire truck could join them. So you could have a, uh, yeah, a first responder type uh, gas lens team if you wanted. And here's a couple of other Jada vehicles. These are not from the Battle Machines line. They are from the quote unquote for sale line. So I guess these are barn fresh vehicles that are being sold in the classified ads, if any of you remember what those are. So we have the Suburban here, the 57 Chevy Suburban. Yeah, these Jada for sale cars kind of look nice and weathered. So you can imagine them kind of on the gas lands track. And uh, if you just wanted to stick a few guns on them, or perhaps they have hidden weaponry, or just a load of people with Molotovs and automatic weapons inside, that would be perfectly fine. There's even a for sale sign in the front. This is the 47 Ford COE flatbed. Yeah, I can kind of imagine the uh, flatbed of this truck being loaded up with uh, barrels of toxic waste that could be set on fire and then rolled off the back to uh, deter any pursuers. And if those exploding barrels don't work, as a heavy truck, you can probably just crash into your enemies at high speed, crush them like beer cans, and then continue on your way. All right, folks, we hope you enjoyed this quick look at some uh, Jada Toys, Battle Machines, the 164 scale versions, 
from about 10 to 12 years ago. And like we said earlier, really the, uh, one of the joys of gas lands is building your own cars, but if you don't have the inclination or the time to do that, this might be a pretty good option. So one of the cars we'll definitely be using, I think, is this battle rig here because he's uh, more or less in scale, give or take. And uh, some of these other ones would be fine. And I especially like this taxi. So someday maybe we'll do a heavy metal inspired scenario where uh, the taxi is trying to get to the UN building. He's got the Loch Nair inside and the bad guys are trying to steal it. Do you know what the Loch Nair is? I do not. Have you seen heavy metal? No. Okay. Well, I know what we're doing this weekend then. All right. I guess that is a wrap on episode 10 of the Skirmish War Games Hobby Vlog. Stay tuned for future vlogs where we will no doubt present more esoteric nonsense from the storage room downstairs. So until that time, take care, everybody. Stay cool, and we'll talk to you soon.